Budapest, the capital of Hungary, is considered by many to be the Paris of the East. Not only is this beautiful city one of the most culturally important metropolises in Eastern Europe, it's also home to numerous UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Straddling the River Danube, Budapest is famous for its thermal springs, some of which have been used for therapeutic purposes since prehistory. In fact, Budapest has so many things to do that you'll want to spend at least a few days exploring this dynamic city. Popular attractions range from impressive architecture and poignant reminders of 20th century history to its vibrant cultural and entertainment scene with everything from street buskers to classical concerts in beautiful churches. Budapest is also a shopper's paradise, from the traditional wares and foodstuffs available at the Grand Old Central Market Hall to Vasi Street, noted for its mix of luxury boutique stores and big brand names. Whatever your sightseeing preferences, get the most out of your hungry travel itinerary. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 rated tourist attractions in Budapest. And just wait till you see what's at number 2, something you may not even have thought of. So make sure you watch till the end. Now before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more awesome travel guides and make sure to hit the notification bell so that you know when we publish a new video. So without further ado, let's cut to the chase. At 10, Heroes Square and the Millennium Monument. The impressive Heroes Square was largely the work of architect Albert Schickendanz. This sounds a bit like Chicken Dance, who was also responsible for the huge museum of fine arts that flanks this large open space. Highlights include the Millennium Monument, a 36-meter column crowned by a figure of the Archangel Gabriel and unveiled in the late 19th century. Around the plinth can be seen a group of bronze horsemen representing the conquering Magyar Prince Arpad and six of his fellow warriors. On either side of the column, colonnades extend in a semicircle and between the individual pillars stand statues of Hungarian rulers. Above the corner pillars are beautiful works in bronze by Zala. In front of the Millennium Monument stands a memorial to the unknown soldier. It's an especially nice place to visit at night when illuminated. Next up, at 9, the Museum of Fine Arts. The Museum of Fine Arts is not only Budapest's most important art gallery, it houses one of the largest collections of works by the old masters to be found in Europe. The extensive array of Italian, Spanish and Dutch paintings are on display in a spectacular, classically influenced 19th century building with long rooms for the larger paintings, cabinets for smaller and more intimate items, together with architecturally interesting space such as the Renaissance Hall. Established in 1870, after Hungary inherited a fine collection of paintings, drawings and prints, the museum is divided into six excellent departments – Egyptian art, ancient art, the old sculpture gallery, the old painter gallery, the modern collection and the graphics collection. The adjacent Palace of Art is the city's leading contemporary art museum and hosts many temporary exhibits, so be sure to check for current offerings. And note that this is not to be confused with the Palace of Arts, a high-tech art centre that houses the Ludwig Museum, a contemporary art collection with works by Picasso, David Hockney and numerous Hungarian masters. And now at 8, it's the Central Market Hall. Located just across the Freedom Bridge from the Gillard Spa is Budapest's Central Market Hall, also known as the Great Market Hall. I suppose it would be. You can't miss it for its central location and its roof of colourful Solmay tiles from the town of Pex. Built in 1897 and the largest and oldest of Budapest's many markets, it's as interesting to view from the inside as it is on the outside particularly if you enjoy people watching, as I do. As cavernous as any major rail terminal in Europe, this popular indoor marketplace encompasses an area of over 10,000 square meters and is as popular with the locals as it is with tourists, here for the abundance of fresh produce, foodstuffs and other goods being traded across its many levels. Feeling peckish? I sure am. Grab a bite to eat from one of the vendors on the second mezzanine level or a pastry and coffee on the go as you continue to explore. There you can try typical Hungarian street food like langos, a delicious deep-fried dough smothered in sour cream, cheese and your choice of veggie and meat toppings. 
While Saturdays are naturally the busiest days at the market because it's closed on Sundays, you can avoid the larger crowds with a weekday visit. If you're an early riser, get here for early morning. It opens at, well, 6am when it's fun watching the vendors setting up and prepping their produce for sale. And now at 7, exploring Gellert Hill. Another of Budapest's most striking features is the panoramic Gellert Hill, a 235-metre block of dolomite that falls steeply down to the Danube. It's here along the hill's geological fault line that several of the city's most famous medicinal springs emerge to supply the Gellert Spa and Rudas Baths, which have lured visitors from far and wide since the 13th century. The Rudas Baths are one of a handful of buildings remaining from the Turkish occupation and are among the few original Turkish bathhouses in the world still in use that date back to the 1600s. On the hill's northeast slope is the Gellert Monument, a tribute to Hungary's beloved famous saint, a Benedictine monk who died in 1046 and after whom the hill is named. Perched high above a man-made waterfall, how do you make a man-made waterfall? It offers magnificent views over the city. The citadel on the summit was built by the Austrians in 1851 and the Liberation Monument was erected in 1947 in memory of the Soviet soldiers who died fighting in World War II. Finally, if you have energy left, take a stroll around Jubilee Park. Laid out to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the October Revolution, it's home to many charming walkways, beautiful flower beds and sculptures. At 6, Matthias Church, Church of Our Lady. Matthias Church, also known as the Church of Our Lady, is a prominent landmark on Castle Hill. It was completed in 1269 and its magnificent south doorway with its relief depicting the death of Mary was added in the 1300s. During the Turkish occupation of 1541 to 1699, the church was used as a mosque and was later renovated in the Baroque style. It has been the scene of several historic events, including the coronation of King Charles I of Hungary in 1309 and the coronation of Emperor Franz Joseph I of Austria and his consort Elizabeth Sissi, as to are known to her friends, as rulers of Hungary. It was for this event that Franz Liszt composed his coronation mass. The free organ concerts held here on some Sunday evenings are well worth attending. Check the website though for specific dates. Also worth checking out, the Ecclesiastical Art Museum is located on the church's medieval crypt and features a collection of sacred relics, stone carvings and replicas of the Hungarian crown jewels. Now at 5, the Danube Promenade. The Danube, or Duna in Hungarian, flows through Budapest from north to south and in some places within city boundaries is as much as 640 metres wide. Wowzers! One of the top three things to do in Budapest is not diving in but strolling along the Danube Promenade, a pleasant century-old riverside walk that extends between the Elizabeth and Sesenci chain bridges. Although there are many places from which to enjoy views of the majestic river as you stroll its banks, either the Buda or Pest sides, they're both good, the Danube Promenade is definitely one of the best vantage points to take in views of the city's stunning architecture. It's also on the banks of the Danube, the northeast side close to the Hungarian Parliament buildings, that you'll find the chilling shoes on the Danube Bank Memorial. It consists of a series of 60 pairs of steel sculpted shoes, memorialising Jews shot here by the Nazis, and is a poignant and moving reminder of the Nazi atrocities suffered by Hungary in World War II. Another great way to view the city is via a boat cruise along the Danube. Numerous tourist excursions depart regularly from the landing stages at Vigado Ter on the Pest Bank and Bem Joseph Ter on the Buda Bank and are highly recommended. It's also fun watching these sturdy vessels from the historic Freedom Bridge as they whip down river only to have to struggle back against the current. Alternatively, you could enjoy incredible views on a budget by taking a ride on the number two tram. Skirting the eastern bank of the Danube, it's considered to be one of the most beautiful tram lines in the world. Next up, at 4, Fisherman's Bastion. Overlooking the Danube, on the spot where the city's fishermen's guild built their defence walls in the Middle Ages, stands the impressive 
Fisherman's Bastion. This exquisite collection of Neo-Romanesque towers, courtyards, colonnades and walls was built between 1895 and 1902 and is one of the most popular points in the city for tourists, largely for its spectacular views over the city and the Danube. While here, be sure to look for the bronze equestrian statue of St. Stephen, the first king of Hungary in the south courtyard. The reliefs on the sides of the base depict scenes from Stephen's life and make for an incredible selfie backdrop. For more great photo ops, head to the upper towers or turrets. There's a small entry fee, but it helps reduce crowding on that part of the attraction. And now at three, St. Stephen's Basilica. Budapest's St. Stephen's Basilica is a popular attraction for its impressive architecture, the beauty of its interior and the panoramic views from its dome. The cathedral is dedicated to St. Stephen, Hungary's holy king and the founder of the Hungarian state. And construction began in 1851, but after several construction setbacks, including the collapse of its unfinished dome, it was not dedicated until 1905. The roof, towers and external walls were badly damaged in World War II and the church's precious mosaics fell from the walls. However, these were successfully restored to their original place and are the highlight of the richly decorated interior. The most impressive of these, the five-part Venetian mosaic, is in the sanctuary and represents the allegories of the mass. The cathedral's most precious holy relic, the mummified right hand of the church's patron saint, the first king of Hungary, is displayed under glass in the chapel to the left of the high altar. One of the best things to do here, if time permits, is to take one of the two elevators that carry visitors up to the cupola for sweeping 360-degree views over the city and the Danube. Alternatively, you can climb the 364 steps. Or on the other hand, you could take two elevators. Guided tours of the Basilica are available on weekdays. Also be sure to check the cathedral's website for details of one of its frequent organ and classical music concerts. At 2, Hungarian Parliament Building and Crown Jewels. A highlight of a walk around Budapest's lovely pedestrian-friendly cobbled streets is the area around the country's architecturally pleasing Parliament Building. Along with its neighbours, the Museum of Ethnography and the Ministry of Agriculture, it's perhaps one of the city's most attractive quarters architecturally. The world's third largest parliament building, this neo-Gothic building was inaugurated in 1886 to mark the country's 1000th anniversary. Hungary was then part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. This impressive structure boasts 691 rooms, as well as an impressive 19 kilometres of corridors and stairs. That's a long way. Guided tours last approximately 45 minutes, surely not 19 kilometers worth though, and are available whenever the government is not sitting and include many of the building's highlights, such as the main entrance hall, various lobbies and the Hungarian crown jewels. Most tickets sell out a week in advance, so do make your reservations as early as possible and be ready to walk 19 kilometers in 45 minutes. Really? And finally, at number one, Buda Castle and Castle Hill. Towering over the Danube, Budapest's Castle Hill contains many of the city's most important medieval monuments and museums. Topping the list of these impressive structures is the 18th century Buda Castle, a massive 200-room palace that replaced a 13th century castle built to protect the stronghold from Mongol and Tatar attacks. Although badly damaged in World War II, much of the exterior has been restored, along with sections of the interior, which now houses a number of important museums. These include the Hungarian National Gallery in the main wing, while in the south wing, the Budapest History Museum occupies no less than four floors. In front of the castle, overlooking the Danube, stands a bronze equestrian statue of Prince Eugene of Savoy, a hero of Turkish attacks on the city. Castle Hill is worth exploring for its medieval lanes and its Romanesque, Gothic and Baroque architecture. This entire historic complex is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Like much of the city, Buda Castle is spectacularly illuminated at night and the castle courtyards remain open 24 hours a day. You can reach the castle on the restored historic Castle Funicular Railway, which departs from the Buda end of the Chain Bridge. 
And there you have the top 10 rated tourist attractions in Budapest. Did you like what you saw? Let us know in the comments down below. Share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fantastic travel guides. That's all for now. Until next time.